Hi everyone, my name is Cheryl Jones. I'm the Health and Human Science Educator here in Hancock County. And I'm gonna be talking with you today about cooking basics. Cooking can be intimidating if you don't know a lot of the terminology that goes along with cooking. And so I'm gonna go over that together with you today and make you feel more confident in the kitchen. Let's go. Sometimes when we're cooking from home, we do not always have the equipment that the recipe might ask us to use. So I'm gonna go over what equipment our recipes might ask us to have, and then what you can use in your household if you do not have that specific item. So the first item I'm gonna show you is a rolling pin. Um, if you don't happen to have a rolling pin, an alternative item that you might be able to use or a substitute would be a water bottle. Um, you can still put your uh, flour on that and then roll that on the dough to help roll it out. If you're needing to uh, measure out liquids and you don't have a liquid measuring cup, you might have a jar that already has measuring on it. And that's something that you might be able to use instead of your liquid measuring cup. Another thing is if you have a vegetable peeler. Say you need to maybe peel some potatoes or carrots and you don't have a vegetable peeler. If you have a paring knife, that can be a great alternative. You just have to be very careful with that. If you have a whisk, sometimes they might ask you to whisk something. You might have an electric whisker. If you don't have that, you might have a regular whisk. And then if you don't have a regular whisk, you can get creative with two forks. Putting your two forks together and then mixing it like that can provide you with the same um, effect as using a whisk. The last item I'm gonna show you is if you have a pan. And sometimes when we're cooking and we have to strain out the liquids, you might not have a strainer, but there are other alternatives. Some pans actually come with a strainer on the lid. And if you don't, and you just have a regular pan like this, you just want to make sure as you're tipping, you hold this nice and tight so that the um, it doesn't slip and the food fall out. And that's another great way to be able to drain the liquid from noodles or whatever you might be cooking in the pan um, without having a strainer. Now we're gonna talk about measuring cups. There are two types of measuring cups that you can use. You can use your liquid measuring cups that are gonna look like this. They're often gonna be clear so that you can see as the liquid rises. And then you wanna make sure that you have your liquid measuring cup on a flat surface. This is to make sure that you get an accurate reading. If it happens to be on a tilt, you might get an inaccurate reading. Then you have your dry measuring cups. This is a one cup measuring cup, as you can see here. And then you have your smaller ones for your teaspoons or tablespoons. I'm gonna demonstrate how you would measure out some dry ingredients. So here I have my flour and I have a spoon and my measuring cup. I'm going to put some flour, spoon it out, into my measuring cup. You wanna make sure that your ingredients are nice and loose, um, especially for flour and sh um, sugar, except for maybe brown sugar. Um, so you want it to be nice, light, and airy. Once you have it overflowing like this, you're gonna take something with a nice straight edge. Here I have a butter knife, and then I'm gonna slide that right across the top of the measuring cup. That's gonna give us a nice, smooth edge and an accurate amount. I will also show with a smaller measuring cup, it's much the same. You're still going to spoon it out into your smaller measuring cup, making sure that it's mounding. And then you can take the straight edge, slide it right across the top. And now this is a two teaspoon, so we have two teaspoons. When you're new to cooking, learning measurement equivalents can be very helpful in the kitchen. You can take a chart like this from eatgathergo.org and print it off and have it in your kitchen. You can also take the information on this chart and be crafty and make your own little handmade magnet for your refrigerator. But either way, having these equivalents around can make cooking a whole lot easier. A few abbreviations to know is tablespoon is capital T, B, S, P, and teaspoon is TSP.
There are times when we want to cook something and we don't have all the ingredients. But there are ingredient substitutions that are great to know so that you can continue to cook the things that you want to make without having to run to the store to get additional ingredients. Here are a few examples. If you were to bake a cake and you needed one egg, you could use two tablespoons of mayonnaise. If the recipe called for one cup sour cream, you could use one cup plain yogurt. If it was calling for one tablespoon all-purpose flour as thickening, then you could use one half teaspoon cornstarch. Now we're going to learn about cooking terminology. Cooking terminology can be another barrier for some when they start to learn to cook. And so I'm going to go over a few basic cooking terminology terms. First we have dicing. Dicing is to cut into small square shaped pieces. Second would be to mince. To mince is to cut or chop food into small pieces. So as you can see, we went from dicing from small square shaped pieces and cut them even smaller for a mince. The next term we're gonna cover is to saute. To saute is to cook in a small amount of fat or water. So as you can see, we heated up the pan and added a little bit of olive oil and then put in our minced onion to be sauteed. Sometimes when you're sauteing, um, they might have you saute for a certain amount of time in a recipe or they may have you saute until say the onions are brown. The last terminology we are going to discuss is boiling and to simmer. First, to boil is to heat liquid until bubbles break to the surface. As you can see, the water is boiling. Many times, recipes will ask you to bring something to a boil and then reduce to a simmer. A simmer is to cook at a temperature that is just below the boiling point. Bubbles form slowly, but do not reach the surface. For more cooking terminology, go to eatgathergo.org. Thanks for joining me for Cooking Basics today. And I hope you've learned some things and you feel more confident cooking in the kitchen. And now you can get started on your own recipes at home. Have fun, bye.